So guys, this is the status now. I've got the Superflop power supply in. I've got it mounted with the rubber standoff here with the rubber protection. I've set up the VGA cables here. Below that there are my SATA cables. I've got one 8 pin connector uh, per cable and the only problem that's left is I realized that I can't mount the radiator on the door panel where I wanted it to mount because the tubes are coming up like this and the, th the whole thing is too thick to be mounted uh, here on the door. So what I tried was mounting it up here in this spot but that wasn't possible as well because this one is so t this one is taller than a standard fan and the radiator from this card is also thicker than a standard fan so it interferes here, I couldn't use it. So then I wanted to mount it here but that wasn't possible because of the two short tubes of this arctic uh, liquid freezer 240. So what I then wanted to do is turn this around but that wasn't possible because of the card interfering with the tubes. As you can see, imagine the tubes would go in here, it would go over this edge from the graphics card. So I could mount it there uh, in the other way around. So well then I thought, well, mount this up here, but then again, I wouldn't, I, I couldn't have mounted it, that one uh, still there, so I would have uh, had to mount this one there. And this one from the bottom car is intake. However, I turned, I tried to screw up the fan of it, but as it turned out, the geniuses at AMD uh, used a zip tie to fixate the CPU, uh, the GPU fan directly to the radiator. So you, this thing is so short, uh, so that you can't turn around the fan unless you uh, cut off the zip tie. Here. Oh, wait, I'll I'll get a little bit better focus. Mm. There we go. Yeah, so this small thing is the fan cable, and uh, it's pretty strongly zip tied. You can barely turn this one. So, yeah, I didn't want to cut it off yet, however, I did manage to get a photo of the fan itself and the manufacturer and the spec sheet, so I'll put it in right now. And yeah, I'm a little bit stuck uh, with this extra uh, radiator here. I can't mount it anywhere because of this uh, zip toy here. As you can see, uh, it's even closer on, on this GPU than on the main GPU there. Uh, so I guess I'll just have to cut this one off. And um, then I'd be able to turn this fan around and use it uh, not as exhaust but as intake because, yeah, you, uh, yeah, I don't want to mount it in the front like this because there's a dust filter and hot air coming out of these vents isn't good for the plastics of this Define. S from Fractal Design and there are just a couple of problems. It's pretty late now and I couldn't finish this but the power supply is suited. We've got the 8 plus 4 pin connector seated there but let me show it to you. Uh, there we go. There's the extra 4 pin and um, yeah as these cables come with dual 8 pin I had to mount to just put the extra 4 pin 
uh, on the side, so that's this one there. But I guess that's fine so far. So, let's zoom back. Yeah, I thought this would be easier since this is a fractal design define as and it's like made for water cooling. But I didn't account these these strange tubes here from the AIO. So yeah, I'll, I'll think a bit about it and check whether I can mount it or not. Uh, so yeah, one problem is also I couldn't mount the di the radiator directly to here because it interfered with the tubes here because they are so short. Uh, that didn't work out either. So the other thing is I got this pretty long power supply here and as I suspected, the fan that I had on the bottom as intake now it doesn't line up anymore with the screw holes neither for 120 nor for 140 millimeter fans as you can see it's just there and you can't do anything there what I did is I took some of my best tape and I just taped it in one here and one there Also, I put a fan grill on it, so the power supply cables don't interfere with the fan here, as you can see. So, that's about it. Now I'll clean the dust filter from this spot and, and I'll put it together. So all in all, I must say that this huge case does now start to look quite populated and I like it. So I've got the system running now and uh, yeah the bottom card does turn off when crossfire mode is enabled and you don't use them on the desktop then these red bars uh, go down until only one is lit and it turns green and the radiant logo turns completely off so that signals you that the thing is in the secondary GPU is in zero power mode so right now it's uh, lit up because I have started battlefield here and as you can see Uh, you can't see it properly there, but maybe on my uh, keyboard it says, that this is the afterburner overlay basically, it says direct D3, D12, so that's direct X12 AFR 200 FPS, and um, yeah that means that we are running on direct X12 crossfire here. I can show you that in the settings as well. So what we've done is, let me go to options, video, right, I'll increase the display visibility for you guys. Ah, now, now you can see that as well. So it says DirectX 12 AFR, that means altering, alterate frame rendering. And we are running here at 4K, meaning UHD, with VSync off and resolution scale at 100%. So that's this thing here. HDR disabled and DirectX 12 enabled. So the rest of the things here is at ultra except anti-analyzing I disabled that and ambient occlusion to turn to SSAO because HBAO or, or what it's called uh, yeah HBAO is an NVIDIA technique so I turned that off alright so let's jump into a multiplayer game 64 player server there we go and um, yeah, I've tested this already and I must admit that I'm 
not not really happy with the performance. Uh, this could could be related to the Vega cards as well as just uh, yeah the, the remaining Direct X12 problems that Battlefield has. But what uh, what I mean is uh, you've got uh, really well FPS, but then uh, sometimes it just hangs and you've got zero for like a second and it's just glitchy and hangy and the performance is not consistent enough to play this game basically so like right now we are at 30 fps 14 8 this is usual when the game starts i i don't know why but it, apparently the textures need to load or whatever you don't got this issue on DirectX 11 however so Let's jump into the game. Okay, 25 FPS. Let me turn a bit. Okay, so look, now we are at 90 FPS, 100. So now we see perfect GPU scaling, but suddenly we drop to 37, uh, 32. So the frame rate is all over the place. It's r just really a bad experience. So now we are at. Look, I I kept setting and we peak up to 120, but when I move, we are like at 30. Look, now I'm moving again and the FPS dropped immediately. When I when I stand still, the FPS increase <laughs> up to the acceptable scaling level but as soon as I move you can't forget playing this game look how stuttery it is we we were down to 19 FPS there it's just completely stuttery yeah this is not the video lagging this this is actually battlefield lagging you, you saw it again yep 9 FPS 11 and this happens all the time while playing. The other thing that I, I noticed is I needed to down, undervolt uh, the Ve Ray, Ray and Vega cards because otherwise the overcurrent protection from my 1200 watt platinum power supply would trigger and the system would just shut off. So we are looking at undervolted. Uh, uh, configuration right now. The memory is at 1100 overclocked, um, the cores at 1600 at 1 volt setup, the rest is just uh, up to the power tune of the of the graphics card. Um, yeah, that's that basically. So now I've restarted the computer and as you can see uh, the bottom card now turned off and the one LED there is just shining green. So yeah, that's the energy saving feature of the RX Vega card. And uh, I really like it, even the R cube turns off there, so you're pretty clear uh, whether your card is in idle or not. So. Uh, right now my computer is about at 120 watts idle consumption. This is down to the 4K monitor plugged into the top card as well as the 1700X running at 4 GHz uh, without idle. So it's always at 4 GHz and full voltage. Yeah, down here you can see it's about at 120 watts, peaking a little bit around. Now we're checking out Shitters of uh, Mordor, uh, running at 4K, I don't know why it says 200% but this is my native resolution on this uh, UHD screen here, doesn't matter, and when we check the advanced video options, I've set everything to ultra except motion blur and anti-analyzing, this is a 2-in-1 setting here. Everything else was from Ultra. 
But we are already in the game here. And apparently this game does have a 100 hertz uh, FPS cap, which we uh, are in quite uh, all of the time. So yeah. Okay, a little bit of lag here and there. I've got um, HBCC activated, by the way. But yeah, this this game's running pretty pretty fine. What I did on my two R nine three nineties as well. So uh, yeah, I'm just running around a little bit. Okay, there was a loading uh, hiccup there as well. But overall, it's, uh, it, it, it runs fine, except some, uh, some load-up errors, some load-up hic hiccups. Okay, we just started this game, so these are my first impressions. Uh, I, I didn't play this game in a while. But yeah, maybe it's uh, related to HPCC. I got I got it activated on both cards, so you can activate it separately. Uh, both cards got around 12.4 gigabytes VRAM uh, available. Um, so maybe uh, that's causing these uh, uh, errors here. Let me try that out. Okay, so now. My second Vega card disappeared from the Wattman control panel as well as the HPCC uh, field. I guess I have to disable Crossfire first. So let's do that. And then let's check what happens. Normally it should come back from itself, but let's try. Radiant settings. Okay, there we are. Global settings. Yeah, the other problem is that I don't got uh, game-related settings uh, for a couple of driver revisions, so I can't tweak the crossfire settings right now. So and now we're still on the. Only one card available. The other two are what man's. As you can see here, what man and what man. And these are global settings. HPCC is unavailable. Okay, because Crossfire is still activated. Let's try again deactivating it. Ah. Now the screen turned black as usual and we are reloading. Okay. Came back up. Aha. Now we've got two Vegas back in the game. So let's turn this one off. Come back. Oh, yeah. So let's try again. The secondary card is blinking around there. Yeah, now you saw it on camera. But I don't get the Radiant pop-up, so I guess we've successfully crashed the Crossfire configuration already. Blinking and 
No update here on the screen. So let's restart and try again. Could no load LD in the bottom one. So yeah, now we are back to the windows. And we are back. Alright, turn off. Crossfire is also off, let's turn that on. Okay, some display restarts here. Okay, that restarted. So as soon as you enable Crossfire, one of your global graphics cards get, gets uh, erased. However, we still don't get any game settings back. But anyways, so uh, yeah, I've got enhanced sync enabled by the way. I don't know whether that plays into uh, some effect. Let's uh, turn that off as well. <laughs> um, let's try Shadow of Mauler by the way. I've also tried Player Unknown's Battleground already and this is also an utterly terrible crossfire experience. The shadows are totally bugged, everything flickers. The FPS are pretty okay, but the minimum FPS is still crappy and yeah, you can't play it. I got a headache from the whole screen flickering all the time. So yeah, the menu here is Capital 60, Nvidia sponsor title as the new one as well. So let's try whether we can actually Oh, there's some flickering as well. So let's try whether we can actually play uh without any major stuttering. So both HPCC and enhanced sync are now turned off. And now let's see what we get. So we still capped at 100 FPS. Okay. So now I don't see any of the stuttering. So yeah, apparently enhancing or HPCC is uh, accountable for our zero FPS drops on the Crossfire configuration. It's just too bad because I thought enhanced sync would be the solution to Crossfire uh, tiering. Because in the 390x crossfire setup, I often have like tearing in the middle of the screen. But so far, everything seems fine now here. So let's actually um, close this game and activate enhanced sync again, and then let's check. Whether whether it was this 
setting or HBCC. For these tests, uh, the CPU is at 4 GHz locked at 1.425 volts and the memory is running at 3200. It's a Corsair LPX uh, Vengeance native 3200 MHz RAM. And uh, yeah, the game just crashed when loading up. We are back at Steam again. So let's try launching this again. And let's see what happens. All right. This time it seems to work. Continue story mode. All right. So yeah, these these have flickerings there. I guess that's just something you have to live with when you're dealing with Crossfire. Okay, so we're back. Let's try this out. Okay, so apparently it wasn't. It wasn't enhanced sync, but these uh, HPCC settings that I had and both calls activated well you can't even tweak them when Crossfire is enabled so yeah I'm uh, pretty satisfied now We've, we do, we're we locked at 100 FPS and both cards seem to do really fine Yep. So I guess I'll have to keep HPCC off uh, while playing in Vega Crossfire. Who would have known that you have to deactivate a Vega Core feature to use it uh, with Crossfire. But uh, now we know. So yeah, that we we had a little drop in FPS there, but overall, uh, I I'd say our average FPS is just about 100. Uh, the cards are equally utilized as well, as we can see on those LEDs. I'll try to get uh, afterburner the afterburner overlay more complete. But often it just deactivates the GPU utilization graphs uh, when you plug in a second card. So let's close this game and actually check into Afterburn. I'm on the latest beta, so that's beta 19. And we don't have a GPU. CPU, GPU temperature, alright. Temperature. Okay, we have some settings here, but apparently they got uh, uh, deactivated when I entered the second call. So let's check it out. GPU voltage, that's great. Let's get that in. Okay, we can't. GPU temperature is not relevant. 
This would be cool. Because we've got some HPM temperature. GPU utilization. Memory utilization. Okay, that's always the same. GPU memory speed. And that's pretty cool. I've got the on screen display and the Logitech G15 keyboard as well. Power target. Oh man, this is get better. getting better than I thought it would. And voltage. And yeah. So let's try again and check whether our settings work with our new overlay. Okay, so my keyboard uh, display is, uh, com is pretty much overwhelmed, as it seems. Scroll right works, and oops, scroll down works. Okay, but I guess we just uh, got pretty much everything we needed. But the GPU2 readings uh, don't seem to work and the overlay it seems itself seems broken as well. I guess I have activated too many different settings. So I guess we will just have to stick to to the keyboard then. Okay, so we are 7 gigabytes VRAM used. It's running at 1100 as I said. And here we see the utilization. However, we don't see the GPU core clock as it seems. But yeah, both GPUs are probably around 80 to 90 percent. And we are at 200 watts per card. So let's check out what my wall meter says. And it says we are running at 686 watts six hundred ninety so yeah that's uh, pretty fine uh, but as I said I've got the cards under voltage so it runs at zero point nine point Five volts at the moment, whereas 1.2 is standard. But yeah, our overlay doesn't seem to work really. So let's check out why. Ah, because it can't read out the second card. So, that's pretty rubbish. Alright. Fine, then let me cancel these uh, GPU2 things here. And I guess our overlay will start to work then. Ah, here we've got the clock, that's pretty great. Okay, so let's save 
And let's jump back in. And uh, now our overlay works. So yeah, now you see I've set 1601 volts and since we are a little bit below, we are um, yeah, running a little bit below 1 volts. I, uh, according to these GPU tags, uh, both GPUs should be at the same power levels. So I guess uh, we can just copy GPU1 as GPU2 and uh, yeah that's it basically. Now let's try out Battlefield 1 uh, again. So yeah as I said we have enabled enhanced sync for this one. So now let's check out whether we can play Battlefield 1 without these terrible stats. So as you can see the resolution even was decreased to 1440p because I, I kept playing it without crossfire because the stutters were just too bad. So here we've got our watt meter. Let's show off the settings again. So now we are at 4K. 100% ultra of SSAO. That sums it up. Let's join into a multiplayer game. There we go. Loading game. Sadly, playing at 4K Ultra, one card isn't quite enough. So that's why I play on 40, 40, 1440p uh, with one card. I've installed it on an SSD, by the way, and still I have to wait seconds and seconds. This game installed, both of the game are installed on a 1 terabyte a Samsung Evo 840 SSD. So no, um, lags we've seen shouldn't be caused by a system drive. That's just too slow. Oh, alright. So we are at our low FPS again, which should rise as I don't move right now. Okay, now I got stabbed. So let's try again. So yeah, this wasn't the solution for this game apparently, since uh, these FPS are pretty much worse than on a single card. Although we are fully utilized over here, um, you can't play seriously. So this is perfect again, and now let's move. And the FPS are shitty. So no, Battlefield 1 still not worthy to play. The only thing that we can do now is uh, try Direct Direct X 11 again. So let's enable that and restart the game. But when I when I tried playing Direct X 11 here with my two 390 X's I had severe problems with uh, lagging as well 
so that's why I didn't uh, play it in Crossfire back then. I've got the Origin UI deactivated by the way. Uh, so because some people said back then that I should disable the overlay from Origin, the in-game overlay, which I did and which didn't help. So yeah, now we are at DirectX uh, 11, I suppose, no we are not, it, it still says DirectX 12, did it not save or what did it do, it didn't save, so let's save again, check, off, with now try again so now we are in direct x11 the second GPU is fully turned on. Now let's check what we are getting here. Multiplayer. Full server. Let's go. So yeah, I'm on a liquid cool, double liquid cool edition. This is the first radiator and this is the second one mounted outside of the case at the moment uh, because I've got some spacing issues here in my case as I've shown you before. Now uh, let's check the FPS. So let's jump inside and get a Cool blast here at the start. All right. So we are just about at 60 FPS. Now we rise to 90 without doing anything. All right. Okay, so that's pretty stuttery as well. We were down to 48 FPS. Alright. Keep in mind that this desert map is the easiest one for the GPU because there's not much besides uh, sand. But yeah, overall, Direct X 11 seems still better than 12, even with multi GPU, which I had never expected because I thought Direct X 11 M GPU would be far superior, but apparently. Uh, they managed to screw it up on Battlefield Direct X12 once again. So yeah, here we are with some frames below 60 again. Uh, some objects now come in, and this little city here. But overall, I I would take this as playable at least, unlike DirectX 12. So now let's try zoning in and out of villages. Seems to work fine. So here we are. 
Um, let's run in. And then we've got a screen freeze. Oh no, it's just those lags once again. But now they are like a full second or two long. Let's try moving into one of these houses here. Okay, I died. But yeah, the FPS overall seems to be fine. Okay, so I got revived and... Now let's check it out. So the last things that I criticized in Battlefield 1 Crossfire was that we had some huge lags when entering uh, villages, uh, I mean buildings, and uh, leaving them again. And apparently we still got some. I got some black arrow bars here. And the FPS is also not looking really fine. Bugging around below 60, now I've got a full freeze again. No, you can't play like this, certainly. Look how, look how laggy this is. And this is like a three thousand dollar computer. And look at this, look at this shit. I mean, what the actual hell is this? They can't be serious when they are selling this, these kind of things to people. They really look. There's an enemy. It couldn't even do anything. I mean, I mean, look at this. I've got a 1700X. I got a Crosshair 6 Hero. I got two Vega Liquid editions, and I'm not able to walk through the door of this building. Gladly, I got a team member here. Reviving me. So now let's test again. Okay, I got killed. But yeah, you saw the stuff. And now we are back at 90 FPS suddenly. Great. So let's join in. Freeze, lag, freeze, okay let's try it here with the store again, so now we are inside the building and now let's get out, no it just, it still lags, look at that, look at these spores. It still does that. Unbelievable. No progress in months. I don't know whether people don't notice this, but I mean, in a fast paced first person shooter as Battlefield, where you are like doing house fights all the time, it just gets noticeable. There, study. These are the settings. Oh man. So now I've changed the settings to a low 1000 overclock and I increased the voltage by 0 0.1 volt to 1.1 volts while keeping the same 1600 core clock and yeah now change the audio skips the game freezes I mean come on you can't be serious with this look at look at this I'm I'm literally walking and the game freezes all the time Look at this. It's frozen. 
this is this is the shittiest gaming experience that you can get. I mean, my ten year old computer doesn't didn't freeze up like that. The VRAM isn't overfilled. I've got sixteen gigs of of normal CPU RAM. This isn't overfilled. The CPU isn't overly uh, utilized. It's running at four gigahertz, as I said. Um, yeah, it's just running like total bull crap. It's just, it's just so bad. You can't even play the game with with. This isn't microstutter. This is actually make macrostutter. Look at this. I mean, the video isn't freezing. It's the game. Now it works, but for how long? The gaming experience is just not consistent. Look at this. It was a freeze again. I mean, you can't play competitive like this. Freeze. 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 Yeah, now I, I got killed during the freeze. And there I am again. Even the over, overview lags. You see that? Oh, it's just, it's just getting worse and worse and worse. So, yeah, for now I'd say do not buy a second Vega and use it for gaming. Do not do it. They tell you that it is great and that you FPS double and they probably measure it. But what they don't tell you is that it's utterly complete bullcrap. So please don't waste your money. Crossfire profiles are shit. Game optimization is shit. DirectX 12 Crossfire is shit. MGPU in Battlefield 1 DirectX 12 mode is shit. These things blow up my 1200 watt power supply down there. It's, it's no joke, but I, I don't know. There are no bigger... There are not really any bigger power supplies than 1200 watt platinum. in them. I mean, I could buy a 1600 watt boy. For two Vegas? And gee, get your job done. Because no, no one will buy two Vegas for this. I mean, the, the menu here even lags. It just keeps freezing from every now and then. How can this happen? Look at this. It just froze. And it's frozen again. No, no one can actually play this. Like, like this. No one. You can forget this shit. It's really, it's really just that bad. And you, and you can waste like seven hundred dollars on a second Vega GPU, and and then you're facing this. I mean, they can't be serious. They really can't be serious. Otherwise, the FPS would be great. DirectX 12 FPS were even higher than this. So the scaling was better with DirectX 12, but you can't just you, you cannot play with uh, with 1 second freezes at random times. You just can't. Look at that. It just froze again. And so what I'm what I'm just not happy about is People build multi GPU systems on YouTube and stuff, and this is what they don't show you. They build those RGB bling bling features, feature rich SLI rigs, and 
this is what it looks like. So I'm moving. I'm just moving the camera so that let you see that it's neither the video or your computer when you watch this. Uh, neither nor is freezing. It's just the game. Yep. There it happened again. And again. And can you see all these stutters? I think I'll cut the video now and get back to you when I... I've got more, but until then... I'm utterly, utterly disappointed. Really, really bad. Bad job, EA, bad job, AMD. I mean, it it worked in uh, in Shadow of Mordor, but that game is like three years old. The Crossfire profile profile worked great back when I had my two three nineties, and uh, yeah. You don't buy dual Vegas when you're when you want to play four year old games or three year old games. You want to play the new AAA titles with uh, with great graphics in UHD. And what you don't want is this terrible lag. So as you can see, the GPU activity also heavily bounces, like we are at zero percent often enough here. I've got a X370 mainboard with Crossfire support. I, I just opted for X370 for Crossfire, not B, but X. So I've got the X8 and another X8 slot for those both graphics card. I'm running the CPU at 4 GHz. And what do I get? I get a couple of 0% utilization drops on the Vega cards. It's just so shitty. So, last but not least, I want to show you PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds. As I play this personally, as you can see, 79, 97 hours. Um, I couldn't play it on 4K with one card because it's just so uh, resource hungry. But I thought, well, uh, let's get the second Vega in the system and try it. And performance wise, Scaling wise it should run at 4k, but boy you haven't You haven't made your calculation with the AMD crossfire You just had a look at this a black bar here Flickering it already starts in the main game and you look at this Look at this Look at this And this is just the main menu. So now let's uh, leave the team here. And join into a game. So, look at that, both cards at 50%. And now look at this. It's in the shadow from that airplane wing here. And basically every shadow in the game looks like this. 
Um, I don't know about you, but I get a headache from that. If I look at this for like an hour or half an hour, depending on how long these games go. So yeah, the FPS also didn't increase because, well, in PUBG you usually CPU limited, but now you've seen, now you've seen the great Crossfire experience of 2017 with AMD RX Vega. Thanks and goodbye. See you next time. Keep a like on the video if you like this unplugged format, the build, uh, build log and uh, yeah, help the channel out by subscribing and liking the video. See you next time. Bye bye.